Hi, I'm doing something that we've all done countless times before. Use a straw. Some people use straws which are about 20-30 centimeters in length. Others may prefer longer straws. The question is, how long can they get? I am Rajesh from Cloud Tutors and this is the next video in our Stem the Confusion series. Welcome. A typical straw is about 20 to 30 centimeters long, no more. But how long can they get? And when I use the word long in this video, I mean the vertical height. Can they get 5 meters long, 10, 100? Or is there no limit to the length of these straws? And it is in these seemingly ordinary and commonplace experiences that we can truly understand science and math concepts in a deeper way. So let's get to it. Before we get to the uh, explanation about the straw, consider this arrangement. It's a, it's a set of vessels containing a liquid, let's say water, and clearly the shapes of the vessels are different, but they are interconnected at the bottom. And you will notice that the horizontal level of the liquid in all these vessels is the same. Now if you consider five points at the bottom of each of these vessels, A, B, C, D and E, they all happen to be at the same depth or horizontal level. Let's consider the pressure at these points. The pressure at these points happens to be a combination of two things. One is the atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of the liquid. The other is the pressure of the vertical liquid column. So the sum of these two is what gives you the pressure at point A or point B. And because the vertical length of the liquid column in all five vessels is the same, the pressure at all these points is the same. And the important thing here is to understand and appreciate that it doesn't matter whether the container is big or small, vertical or uh, slanting, you know, and has or, or has a, a different shape entirely. The only thing that matters to the pressure at the bottom of the vessel is the vertical height of the liquid column. Now having understood that, let's get to the straw. If you look at the straw and as you pour a liquid in the cup, you will notice that the level of the liquid in the straw is always the same as the level of the liquid in the cup. They rise together. If I pour more water, you can see that the level of the water in the straw is the same as the level of the water outside the straw. If you take two points A and B, both at the same depth, one is outside the straw, point A, and one inside. The pressure at point A, again, is a combination of two things. It's the atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of the liquid plus the pressure of the vertical liquid column. Now pressure A, pressure at A is equal to pressure at B. And that is essential to understanding how the straw works. Now, if you go back to this situation where you start sipping something with a straw, you are creating an area of low pressure in your mouth. Now let us consider the pressure at points A and B. As the liquid begins to rise in the straw, so you're sipping a drink, the liquid begins to rise in the straw. At this point, remember, you have created an area of low pressure in your mouth. So the, the pressure at point A is a combination of two things. It's the atmospheric pressure on the surface of the liquid plus the vertical column 
L1 and the pressure at point B is the lowered pressure in the mouth plus the length of the vertical column of liquid L2 in the straw and those two pressures are equal. In that scenario when these two pressures are equal, remember if you want to increase the liquid column L2 in the straw which means take the liquid to a higher and higher level increase the length of the straw then you can do that only by lowering the pressure in your mouth the lower the pressure in your mouth gets the higher the liquid will rise in the straw so what do we have from there the highest level the liquid can rise in the straw is when the pressure you create in your mouth is zero that's not quite possible but theoretically that is the answer so the atmospheric pressure outside the straw becomes equal to the liquid pressure the pressure of the liquid column inside the straw and this is only possible when you create zero pressure or, or vacuum in your mouth so assuming the liquid is water for this calculation and the atmospheric pressure uh, at sea level is 101,000 uh, pascals you get that the water in a straw can rise no more than 10.33 meters it doesn't matter how hard you try it cannot go above 10.33 meters and now that brings us to some interesting questions would you be able to sip uh, juice using a, a straw on the surface of the moon would the answer 10.33 meters differ, be different if you were to do the same straw experiment uh, on top of Mount Everest for example would the answer be different if you were sipping uh, a more dense liquid like milkshake instead of water these are questions that you can consider and finally I will leave you with this question if you have an arrangement of vessels like this uh, which are interconnected at the bottom of course the horizontal level is the same but if you were to tilt it which of these options would be right what which picture here will describe the level of the water when this arrangement is tilted now the reason we do these videos and I received a couple of people writing to me uh, uh, received a couple of questions asking me about the objective of these videos one to bring a sense of joy in, in seeing science and math in everyday experiences. Second, to create a deeper sense of understanding about concepts because no mistake, it is necessary if you want to do well in competitive exams. I hope this video sorted out the confusion regarding that topic. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.